Rights Act. I don't think the Civil Rights Act had been passed then. We're talking about in 1941 and 42. I think it was passed in 44, uh, 64. So the Civil Rights Act had not been passed then, I don't think. You want to talk about the Atlanta Inquirer, the student's newspaper that they started? Uh, yeah. The Atlanta Inquirer was started by the students and Julian Bond and his girlfriend, which he later married, Alice. They were the editors of the, what was it, the Atlanta? Inquirer. Huh? Atlanta Inquirer. And, uh, yeah, they wrote articles uh, supporting uh, integration and things like that. Okay, keep talking. Okay. They wrote articles. Uh-huh. Wrote, they wrote articles, uh, and uh, Julian Bond and his future wife were some of the writers or editors, and they wrote, they wrote uh, articles uh, opposing segregation and so forth. And you've told us some great stories of um, how you all bailed the students out or kept them from going to jail. Huh? Um, and you all were the counsel for uh, student nonviolence, student nonviolence coordinating committee, SNCC. Yeah, well, we weren't we weren't counseled for the organization, but we were counseled for members in the organization, particularly their leaders. And uh, uh, by that time, the leader of uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinate, Coordinate Committee was John Lewis. John Lewis, you know, he's a, he's a United States congressman now. And uh, they, uh, they uh, after a while, the, the board of directors or whatever they were, if they uh, felt like uh, John Lewis was too conservative. By that time, uh, Julian Bond had got elected to the legislature in 1966. But he was not allowed to take his seat because he begged John Lewis uh, as being against the war in Vietnam. And uh, they arrested him, Julian Bond. And uh, uh, so while he was uh, although he's gotten elected in 1966, maybe in 65, 65 or 66, he was not allowed to take his seat. So uh, uh, we represented him then. By that time, I had already gotten elected to the state senate. Leroy Johnson was elected in 62, and I was elected in 1964. And uh, although we represented Julian Bond, no, we, we spoke, Hollowell spoke in behalf of Julian Bond before the joint session of the Georgia legislature. But to no avail, he was, uh, convicted by the legislature. He didn't go to jail, but he was denied his seat in the legislature. So uh, some lawyers, I've uh, forgotten the name of them now, uh, white civil rights lawyers, they took this case up, took it all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States, and they overturned, overturned the conviction of Julian Bond and he was admitted, readmitted to the legislature. 
did you do anything with the Freedom Riders? No. Freedom Riders just came through here, but they didn't stop in Atlanta. They went into Alabama, and they was attacked in Alabama. I didn't have anything to do with that. Uh, what about the desegregation of Grady Memorial Hospital? Uh, yeah. Uh, we had a, there was a dentist, a dentist by the name of, uh, can't think of his name, Bell, R.C. Bell, and he started this lawsuit against Grady. And uh, the, uh, he's represented by the NAACP. So the, the Legal Defense Fund, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, at well, that time it had been formally headed by Thurgood Marshall, but by this time it was headed by Jack Greenberg. So he retained our office to, uh, to represent the people who had been arrested. Roy Bell and uh, a lady who had Doris, Ruby Doris Smith, who had tried to integrate the nursing school. So we took the case, took it to the federal courts in Atlanta, and the federal courts ordered that uh, Grady Hospital, along with the nursing home, to be desegregated. And I understand the students, Judge uh, Brenda Cole. Who? Uh, Judge Brenda Cole helped to lead some marches when she was in school then. Who? Judge Brenda Cole. Bre Bre Brenda Hill Cole. I don't remember her okay. right now. But the students 